Hello there, my fellow space nations that nobody cares about, and welcome back to some more Battletech lore. Today we shall explore the story of another tiny nation of the periphery. Also, in case you guys enjoyed the Marian hegemony overview, this state and the story we're gonna narrate today is actually closely tied to that of the Marians. We're gonna see some of the same events, but from a different perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Lothian League. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Once upon a time, in order to avoid being captured by the Star League, a group of patriots out of the Torian Concordat fled into deep space. In 2691, under the leadership of one Angelina Logan, they settled on the planet of Lothario, which was later discovered to be rich in metal ores. Over time, the League expanded deeper into the periphery and formed a seven-member confederation. With the Logan family at their head, it slowly grew into a small periphery nation. The only serious threat to the League's existence came in 2933, when renegade mercenaries from shattered units in the latest round of the Succession Wars stumbled upon the League quite by accident. For four years, both sides conducted a series of raids and counter-raids, until finally the renegades left to seek easier prey elsewhere. These actions cost the League its few jump ships, and also damaged the little industry they managed to build on Lothario. The destruction would force the ruling Logan family to renew trade treaties with the other planets of the periphery in a desperate effort to avoid economic ruin. During the last century, the League became a major supplier of iron and copper ore to the Magistracy of Canopus and the Torian Concordat, receiving in return agricultural and mining equipment to sustain their fragile existence. Another major export were furs. Indeed, the trapping industry created impressive amounts of revenue as the demand for rich pelts had grown over the last century. Lorelei Logan became the ruler of the League in 3025, and ruled until the Marian Conquest in 3055. She was a descendant of Angelina Logan, and was nicknamed the Ice Maiden. Although on good terms with her fellow leaders in the Illyrian Palatinate and their Circenus Federation, she wanted little to do with the great houses of the Inner Sphere. Nevertheless, she did maintain limited contact with the Inner Sphere, mainly to hire mercenary bands to defend Lothian planets against the raids of the Marian hegemony. The Lothian League was known to employ two big mercenary units, although the identity and quality of these troops is unknown. Throughout the years 3052 and 3053, Caesar Sean O'Reilly of the Marian hegemony would launch several raids on Lothian planets, gradually wearing down the mercenary units defending them. The attacks increased in frequency and ferocity as the months wore by, followed by a full-scale invasion in 3054. However, the Lothian League was a hardier opponent than the Marian legions expected, holding out for more than a year against the Marian assault. Dame Lorelei dipped deeply into the Lothian treasury and hired additional mercenary units, and her very daughter, Liesel, led a small battle mech unit against the invaders with astonishing success. By early 3055 though, the Legion's superior firepower began to overwhelm the Lothian defenders. Dame Logan made a desperate appeal to the Torian Concordat for any troops they could spare, but the protector of the time, Thomas Calderon, refused to send any help, citing the need to keep his own armies on alert against a possible Federated Commonwealth attack. Caesar Sean O'Reilly himself led the assault on Lordanax, the last League planet to fall. He destroyed the Home Guard, killing Lisa Logan as well. Upon the triumphal landing on Lothario, the League's former capital world, the Caesar ordered the imprisonment of Dame Lorelei and her surviving family. However, the Logans did manage to escape and hide. The conquest was greatly opposed, though, by both active and passive resistance from Lothian citizens. Caesar Sean O'Reilly installed two-thirds of the Second Marian Legion across the Seven League planets to deal with the insurgents, 
but the Legion forces were barely enough to hold their own against the guerrilla opponents. Furthermore, Marian government officials installed to enact Caesar's policies had to repeatedly deal with blatant disregard for their imposed authority. It was later discovered that the Lothian freedom fighters received aid from the Magistracy of Canopus, who were interested in keeping the Caesar and his legions too busy for further conquest. The resistance fighters also received aid in small amounts of money from the Illyrian Palatinate. The ambitious Caesar then tried to conquer the world of Astrokhazi, but was forced to retreat. Returning to Alfard, he was confronted with the news that his new Lothian subjects were on the brink of open rebellion. Thus, the Third Legion was sent to pacify the Lothian worlds again. The son of Caesar, Julius, a recent graduate of the Collegium Bellorum Imperium, had been recently promoted to command a century in the First Legion. He quickly gained the attention of several powerful anti-Caesar military leaders and senators who would build a power base around him. A very angry Sean O'Reilly transferred Julius in June of 3060 to command a cohort of the Second Legion on Lordanax. The unit was highly demoralized after constant Lothian raiding. The war was a cycle of death as recruits poured into the Second Legion at a quick rate and Lothian civilian casualties steadily mounted due to the Caesar's bloody reprisals. The unit of Julius was sent on a series of punitive raids against several settlements suspected of harboring anti-Marian rebels. Sean was hoping that this experience would either harden his son or kill him. Julius began to openly question his father's path of conquest though, covertly building a power base within the Second Legion to whom he promised an end to the Lothian troubles. Julius was then successful in hunting down and capturing the leader of the Lothian resistance, Elena Logan, daughter of Dame Lorelai Logan. Disobeying the order to outright kill her, Julius began to negotiate instead. The two did manage to reach an acceptable agreement. Elena agreed to cease the brutal guerrilla war in exchange for a cessation of reprisals a position of senator in the hegemony government, and a position as advisor on Julius's personal retinue. Within one year of arriving, Julius had successfully ended the resistance, and now was ready to make the next move. In January 3063, Julius O'Reilly led both the second and the recently arrived fourth Marian legions, as well as the third legion's first and third cohorts away from Lordanax. The fact that he was leaving all the auxiliaries and the second cohort of the third legion behind to garrison the league was of little concern to Julius. If Elena Logan had reneged on her agreement, Julius would have returned and leveled every building. After later usurping the throne from his father, Julius declared the former Lothian League as a united territory within the hegemony, granting the former nation voices in the senate. He further granted Lordanax and Lothario to Elena Logan in fiefdom after accepting her as a personal advisor on civil problems. All inhabitants were granted Marian citizenship and granted a three-year exemption from conscription. The Lothian League officially regained their independence, however tentatively, in 3128, after decades of unrest and conflict with the Marian hegemony. But the Lothian League of the Dark Age bore little resemblance to the free state which existed a century earlier. However, the leader of the League adopted the title of Grand Mistress, and ruled over the League with the assistance of a Senate consisting of three representatives from each of the member planets in a very Marian fashion. The ruler of the League, the Grand Mistress Clarissa Logan, attempted to abolish slavery in the League in 3134 a step which nearly brought the League and the hegemony to open combat once again, as those Marians trading in the League or operating industries protested. Logan managed to defuse the situation by amending the proposal so that it only applied to citizens of the League, and further requiring that any slaves who received manumission serve in the Lothian military before obtaining their freedom. The measures did stave off another invasion by the Marians, defusing the situation. Although the League did gain a measure of independence, it did remain lacking in resources to support a large-scale military. A new training academy, the Lothian Combat Academy, was established to train armor crews and anti-tank infantry, 
and a single, small Alfred Trading Corporation plant producing a number of tank designs was built. Regarding Battlemax, the League had to import them. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about this tiny, unfortunate state, oppressed again and again by the Marians, for today. The periphery might hold more opportunity and freedom, but it is also a lot easier to get screwed over, because nobody else will come to help you. What about you, though? What are your thoughts on the Lothian League? Did you ever hear about them prior to this episode? Are they among your favorite nations of the periphery? What do you like or dislike about them? Do share your thoughts or questions in the comments below if you want. Thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the like, share, and subscribe buttons for future content.